All right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, in the studio, joined today by Randy Angston. What's up, bud? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Fit Pro Growth Summit is the growth summit that you need to be at if you are listening to this podcast. Okay. Boom. Period. Because if you're listening <laughs> to this podcast, you're a gym owner. And, and this, you want to grow. Uh, this event, yeah, and you want to grow. You wouldn't be spending your time letting us tickle your eardrums with these sweet knowledge bombs uh if you if you weren't interested in growth right and so the whole you know the whole event is built for you um i you know there's ursa's this weekend there's perform better seminar you know like a lot of that stuff is great information for the technical side absolutely i mean i think ursa drips in a little bit more business but that's for big box health clubs it's not the sem you know it's not the the micro gym yeah. group it's just yeah. not there's uh you know there's plenty of crossfit-esque you know seminars that you know it's all about the workouts the programming and all this and it, well i get that's all inf that's great information and it's probably fun you it, probably enjoy it you do enjoy right? it yeah the, the business is what's paying the bills, right? The business uh, aspects, the skill sets, the marketing, the sales approach, the customer service, all the stuff that we talk about, the growth summit, that's what's driving, that's really moving the needle in your business. You could be the best trainer, you could have the best program, you have the best equipment. If you don't know marketing and sales and customer retention strategies and all that other stuff, it does, none of that matters. Right. We had a good friend of ours, Frank Nash, who was like, Hey, yep. there, there's a guy out there that's a worse trainer than you, making way more money than you. And it's because he's a better marketer. Yeah. And it's just the honest truth. So you've got to understand all the aspects of the game. FitProGrowSummit.com, where you're going to grab your ticket. It is uh, between, f what is, what, I don't know, the pricing's on. The, <laughs> I don't even know what the price is. We're at 447 to 590, so depending yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, and as we get closer, the tiers go up, right? Correct. The price increases. You're going to want to grab your tickets as soon as you can. It's June 8th through 10th in Scottsdale, Arizona. Got it? It's live. It's in person. Very important. Yeah. So today, that, I'm glad that you said that because you were talking about a few things in there, right? The purpose of the Growth Summit, the purpose of this show, the purpose of growing your business is to increase the quality of your life. Should be. I mean, if you're a business owner and you have a desire to make more money for your business, what does that mean? It means more profit. It means more money in your pocket at the end of the day. It means happier employees because you can put more money in their pocket. It means growth in other aspects. Like that's the purpose of growing a business is growing the business. But the skills that you're learning along the way can also spill over and, and benefit your quality of life as well. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit in this episode is the the skill sets that you acquire being a gym owner mm -hmm. you mentioned marketing you don't really have a choice as a gym owner getting off the ground on how to spread the word right and that's probably why most gyms believe that their marketing uh strategy is word of mouth and that's probably why there's limited growth is because that's a skill set that is not developed learned implemented and then benefited from um you know, we've talked about marketing since we were in agency, what, 2015. Uh, that is in, in pay, like one of the biggest skill sets a gym owner can learn to grow their facility, right? If not, maybe the most. Um, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't come down to the certifications. It doesn't come down to the equipment that you're using. It doesn't come down to, you know, the latest and greatest uh, trends in the fitness um, you know, realm for the most part. It falls down to the, the quality of the fundamentals of business and your ability to do it repetitively. And the skill sets, right. And, and yes, gym owners by far and away are, are probably one of the most uh, skill uh, dense entrepreneurs. Absolutely. It's very interesting because we talk about this in our iron circle. We've, we've got gym owners that have been gym owners for 15 years moving into another industry and telling us how easy it is to grow those businesses because of the skill sets they learn as a gym owner. Mm -hmm. I just don't know why it's this way, but when it maybe maybe because a lot of gyms are bootstrapped, or maybe it's you know it's not a huge revenue generating 
business. It's just not. I well, mean, let's take let's take the let's take that let's break it down. I mean, let's say that you're comparing. I mean, our buddy Jerry, right? Like he moved into he's got the salon and he's got something just right there, the same level of skill set, and you change the the product or the service that's available. Yeah. Holy crap! We got people running through our doors because they want what we have to sell, not we have to convince them to come every damn yeah. session. You know what I mean? Like the desire from the consumer side that's the immediate gratification in most of those mm -hmm. available services and products right fitness is very damn hard to sell it's hard to it's hard to service it's hard to implement it's hard to get somebody to continue to come back it is and if that's the struggle that we're going you know the big hurdle that we're going against if we remove that hurdle and we still have the same benefits and skill sets you damn well better be running real fast and hard because yeah. you have what it takes in those realms yeah. And I yeah. think that's the biggest biggest key to well, 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 why we yeah, see a lot the, of that the is the product part. changes. But what I'm saying is the 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 revenue that comes in on a gym just doesn't allow the gym owner to to outsource a lot of sure, stuff. Sure, absolutely. So they have to actually learn a lot of these skills themselves. And and while it's a necessity, it's also a, it's also a benefit in life. So what are some of the skills you have to learn? You you. I mean, it's pretty impressive to see some of the the digital marketing uh, chops that some of these gym owners oh, yeah. have. The email and text message automation, Zapier, connecting it to Google Sheets, and, and you know all the stuff that we talked about in our CLA and in automation. Um, I brought it up before the show. Like, I was hired as a gym owner to go install automation in a law firm. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You had a law firm. It does several million a year. I mean, I think it was like 20 million a year. Uh, and they didn't even know how email automation and text messaging and remarketing even worked. They're and blown so, away. And so I installed a, a pipeline and a automate, and they're like going crazy. Oh my gosh, it will follow up. All I have to do is click this button and it knows to, yeah, yeah, it's all built for you. Go ahead. And so over here in the gym space, there's, there's several people that, install this type of thing and it's like yeah we have to because it's a necessity right and i think that yeah and that might be a you when you don't have a team and you don't have cash flow to go pay other people to do it yeah you, ha you have a you have right. the, tr the function of the job has to be done right and yep. um automation is one of those things where i think that is born from necessity because you get tired of sending follow-up emails when it's the same damn follow-up email every single time and you realize oh there's a system that'll do this for me yeah utilize the system right and right. uh yeah, I mean, because it, 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 again, it's automating repetitive tasks, and, and that's a huge thing for somebody who doesn't have a team or the cash flow to, mm -hmm. to outsource that. So that might be one of the biggest growth aspects I think of a gym owner can leverage would be automation. In automation. Uh, the the skill set of marketing is another one. I mean, can't even even something as simple as Canva and creating graphic design like. Go to a restaurant or another, a, a Cairo, or they, they don't know any of this stuff. Gym owners, you have to. You have to know how to market. You have to know how to write emails and do automation. You know how to, you need to know how to sell. Yeah, you sales. Need to, you, you pay bills, you know. You, you're probably pretty uh, integrated in your QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Bookkeeping. Uh, bookkeeping and things like that. Um, Obviously, the training, training aspect, it, mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts of the, the the actual programming out there, customer service that comes along with serving the psychology. Oh, you're you're a you're a, a therapist, a therapist on the, on the <laughs> yeah. training floor. Um, as a gym owner, or even as a fitness director, there's leadership skills that you have to do. Now, not to say that you know in a restaurant you don't need leadership skills, or in a chiropractic office, uh, you know you do, but maybe not at this level it's just so different it's well you know so many like, skills that you have to have as a gym even owner. comparing you know this business the service the, the number of clients that we we serve looking at other businesses that i mean i've got friends that are in i mean i've got friends that are in dental i've got friends in chiropractic physical therapy all like similar somewhat similar services in a way mm -hmm. they all have tw two three four times the employees every do, single one of them do they every single one of them right i mean you're you've got an hr team you know, somebody, somebody on the team that do, does just handles all, all HR oh, yeah. policies. Like, right. we have 10 people that work here. Like, how the hell do we have enough HR situations? That it, it, but it does. You're saying the, the people in those other industries have HR. They have an HR individual. Yeah. They have somebody HR is typically falling back to the gym owner. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, sales. It's not like everybody on the team manages some of the sales, like a lot of fitness facilities, right? You've got trainers or a fitness director. 
or an owner, like some, they all, d- they all have stuff. some degree of sales sometimes on all of their plates. Um, or, you know, certain people within that, that organization do, but otherwise you have a dedicated salesperson typically, um, uh, marketing. It doesn't usually happen within the four walls of a business other than word of mouth, maybe, or somebody in there is responsible for, for ordering the trifolds or, you know what I mean? But yeah. there's another agency that's in charge of the material and the design. It probably the, comes down to the, the ability to fund it. I, it's it's, it's got to be a cash flow. It, it is. It totally is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we see P&Ls all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. We, we, we look uh, when we're coaching gyms, we, we look at the, the expenses and a lot of them are running pretty lean. It's not like you can go in and like chop 30 percent out of the expense line. It's like, man, we're pretty lean already. It's the growth of the top line gross revenue is just not there. And so at the end of the day, we look at the different models that that live out in the, in the fitness landscape, the industry. It's like, would, would does it make more sense to try to go low ticket? large group training, you know, 159 to 179, 199 a month, or high ticket, leverage semi-private training with, you know, $500 a month times six per hour. It's like, there's there's a lot of uh, more benefit. A lot of problems get solved with more generation of revenue. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you could lay out all your problems. If you just made more money, a lot of that stuff would typically go away. Um, you know, we're, we're not getting enough people in the door. Well, let's spend more. You need more money for that, man. We don't have enough. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we don't have anybody to cover that shift. Well, if you had more money, you can hire another person, right? Like there's all these things. Yeah. Well, you nailed it. I mean, it, money, money provides you with either, you know, the ability to outsource it, literally maybe spend more money on the ads themselves. Like just the yep, marketing spend volume. itself, more volume of, yeah, exactly, eyes at the end of the day. But if you don't have that, then what, what can you do as a gym owner? You can develop the skills. You can, the, the work then becomes developing the skills to make yourself a component in that acquisition, right? Develop your understanding of Facebook marketing. Develop an understanding of Google and AdWords. Develop um, you know, an understanding of how to set up and run and manage a campaign. But before you do all of that, how about we know the numbers of your business? Let's know the KPIs that are driving the business. Um, not to throw anyone under the bus because it's a common thing, but I had a gym owner reach out literally as we were recording the podcast before we got started. Yeah. And she wasn't, uh, she wasn't sure of the uh, client lifetime value of her business. And so as it was required in order for her to book the call, she didn't know what to put. And so she reached out to me instead. And I said, well, well, here's the easiest formula, but that right there, guys, is the difference between you being successful as a gym owner and you being the, the longtime hobbyist. It's going to come down to the skill sets. Most of them, in my opinion, got to be financial, uh, financially rooted. If you don't understand the sales components, if you don't understand the marketing, if you don't understand where the numbers of your business mm-hmm. are both coming from and going and how they're impacting the business as a whole, the rest of it's just guesswork. And I think that's that's the thing that's really come clear to us over time is you could throw as many people in the front door as you want, but if you don't have the the, the systems in place, the skill sets to make the most of it, they're going to come and go. Yeah. And growth comes from knowing those metrics of the business and being able to run the play. I, I mean, I think that everybody overcomplicates it so much because we're overlooking the stuff that's just not fun, it's just not sexy. Nobody wants to sit there and look at the numbers and understand the numbers that drive the business. It's way more fun to go, hey, got a new kettlebell certification this weekend. Yeah, I love the numbers. Um, but, 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 but the- It speaks to- but, the, Well, the point is, um, you, you said it earlier, it's like you have to go develop those skills. Uh-huh. In order for you to, to get to where you want to be, you either, you either go learn it yourself, you hire a coach, you, you, you purchase a, cert, not a certification, but like a, a coaching program or a- uh, training program or whatever it is to learn those skills. Cause guess what? I, I learned all of them. Yeah. Like the automation deep in the weeds. You guys know that I've talked about it all the time. In fact, I'm a, a, a certified partner, certified partner, but on the advisory, Advi- yeah. which is the top uh, 15 in the entire organization. I'm one of those, um, you know, and I run a gym, right? And so deep in the weeds, Facebook marketing, uh, I'm relaunching ads right now as we speak. Like I know exactly what to do. Uh, I went and learned Google ads when we needed it, right? I went and did all that stuff. We ran an entire agency as 
because we learned the skill sets ourselves, and not a single person in the industry was doing it at the time. But that was it. Self-trained, absolutely. But that doesn't mean you can't, as a gym owner, go do that. And a lot of a lot of. I don't know if it's because we speak to this too. Like, sh- even though you could do it, should you do it? At the end, at the beginning of this whole conversation is if you don't have enough money, you have to go do it. Absolutely, you just have to. Yep. So, don't take that the wrong way. Where it's like, well, I shouldn't be doing this work. No, you absolutely should be doing that work until you can afford to outsource or hire or or not have to learn it. And that's that's the thing. So like when you when you're in a position where when we're coaching somebody about giving up things in their business that somebody else needs to be doing at a certain point is because their time at that point can and needs to be spent on other areas of the business. That means they've gained the skill sets, increased the revenue to a point where if they don't hand off certain tasks and responsibilities they they're lo- they're now exactly now it's going to cost them yeah. by staying in that seat and that's the difference they have the availability of an, an addition of paying somebody or paying an agency so that what does that provide for that gym owner time back that time back then is spent on other income producing activities yeah. and areas of the business exponential growth then occurs that's it but when you don't have the, the 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 funds or you don't have the people to be able to it's do it go. it's got to be on your shoulders it rolls uphill and you have to own that as a as the owner of the operation you have to burden that you just have to and that means going home at 6 p.m having dinner and getting right back on the computer at 7 30 after the kids go to bed or whatever and just go do the work guys let's be honest i mean this is it's 2023 now yeah 2015 facebook launched its ads campaign if you as a gym owner if, is you if you as a business owner do not have somebody managing and running your ads right now and you yourself do not know how to do them that's your fault it's your fault like you should be in a position right now to be running ads if you can't afford for somebody else to be doing it it's a facebook blueprint guys google it google facebook Blue- <laughs> facebook will teach you ex- their side Mm-hmm. of setting up ads here's the platform like this is their material learn it go to google and look at people that are giving away the information on how YouTube, to run ads yeah. youtube number two search engine in the world why because it's videos they're going to show you exactly how to set up ads i'm not saying all of that's the same and it's all going to give you amazing results but you have to start somewhere you have to get in the weeds you have to start looking at who's doing things who's getting the results that you aspire to have and go emulate their success there's nothing else you can do until you can afford to do it or pay somebody else to do it there it's you on you but you have to build those skill sets skills to pay the bills boom boom that's it so listen gym owners i'm with you on this uh, no not a, it's not a lot of fun some of this stuff and going to go, maybe it is fine for me it was. we love actually yeah. i enjoyed it i enjoyed uh, i enjoyed the outcome of being able to click a few buttons and money shows up the next week. It's very cool. It's a, it's freeing. It's, it's very um, comforting to know like, Hey, you know what, if we're struggling at any level, I, I know exactly what to do to fix this and go fix it. Um, so that being said, plenty of resources. Uh, if you, if you want to get into coaching with us, we've got our, our million dollar model coaching program, jump on a call. If you've got questions about, you know, anything business related, we got the Facebook group for you. Mm-hmm. Business talk with fitness professionals. Go join that group, go ask the questions and you'll get a dozen responses. Pretty cool. Um, if you need to, if you need anything else, you know how to find us. You can catch us on the Instagrams or the internets of the of the sort. But uh, hopefully, hopefully this kind of sets you, your mind right. Like, hey, you got to go learn the skills either or, or you have the money now that you can outsource it. So like it's one or the other. Yep. So hopefully that helps you guys. Till next episode, guys, keep changing lives. We'll see you on the next show. Bye. All right. And thank you for listening to that episode of the Built to Grow podcast, where we help gym owners win. Now, do you want to connect with me and other gym owners online? All you need to do is join our private Facebook group, Business Talk with Fitness Professionals. Just head on over to Facebook and type in Business Talk with Fitness Professionals. And when you do, we're going to give you our 10 marketing strategies, seven figure gym owners use to win. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, keep building something great.